he's in. He's certainly in the 2013 uh, follow-up. I really need you to know less details about this, but I am fascinated. I will well, admit. If you're gonna if you're gonna bring me in to, to do something, I'm gonna put the effort in. You know, That's I'm not right. one of these kind of fly by. I'm not Cara Santa Maria. She turns up two minutes before, hasn't watched the film, and blags it. I'm gonna put the fucking effort in, guys. Shots fired. <laughs> She also thinks it's Jeff, like an idiot. <laughs> you heard me. She's actually really smart. She's smart. She, she's Fine. great. She's great. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God awful movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie. So you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the beautiful and talented Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? I'm amazing, Heath. How are you? I'm pretty good. Glad glad to hear you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. You weren't? No. Did you watch this week's movie? I Okay, I enjoyed it. Yes, I did. Yes, I really, <laughs> really did. Unabashedly enjoyed this. Super kid, kid, Winning a nail. Okay, we also have seasoned veteran masochist who is also beautiful and talented, Michael Marshall. Marsh, welcome back. Oh, well, normally I would say, you know, it's great to be back. And normally I would be lying. But this time I'm actually telling the truth. Thank you so much for having me on this show <laughs> and exposing me to this particular thing. This was <laughs> this was a joy. This was an absolute joy. <laughs> All right, Marsh, let's get right into it. What are we going to be breaking down today? We watched Super Kid Academy, The Intruder. Ah, oh, it was an absolute joy. It was the story of a bunch of Christian kids with the superpower of asynchronous swaying, mm -hmm. I think, <laughs> pushing back against the evils of network broadcasting. That's what we <laughs> yep. watched. Yeah. They will dance. It's rough well, and delightful. They'll dance like they've never met each other before. <laughs> <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you love Barney the Dinosaur, but that coward never took the time to give MTV the thrashing it deserves, you will love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yes, there is. There is. There is. Absolutely Please go. Lots. Marsh? I'm going to go with um, the best way to defeat evil. Because we've got this big, <laughs> evil, monopolistic media company that's broadcasting 24-7 all around the world on all of the channels. Horrible stuff. And the way to defeat that is to cut in every now and again on, like, one channel and do <laughs> a song about who you are for four minutes and then stop again. And the thing is, yep. if that's going to defeat all of evil, are they broadcasting that on all of the channels? Because if they're not, someone's going to go, oh, it's those fucking kids again. Just switch over. See what's on the other side. For them. No, th their, their solution to supreme evil was like, we made a YouTube channel. You all have to please watch it. Don't <laughs> yeah. do like any of the other stuff. Sm smash that button. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go with best worst rapper. Uh, mm. Strong disagree. So <laughs> we really, are in a fight. <laughs> wow. Apparently we're in a fight. We're going to get to the details of this rapper, but just know there will be a rapper. And it's like, so, okay, imagine me rapping. Like, imagine if I was going to rap this whole episode. If I was like, riggity, riggity, rap, 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 going to rap this episode front to back. And when I say God, I'll use it. Like, it's worse than what you just heard. It's so much worse than that. I don't know how Eli is going to defend this. But also a child at gunpoint. That's what you got to combine <laughs> with it. And it becomes... The best thing ever. Yeah. Right. And also bear in mind, Heath, the way you're describing it, that sounds terrible. But listeners, picture Heath doing all of that in a sideways cap with a CD on a string around his neck. <laughs> Suddenly amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Yeah, exactly. All right. Exactly. Everyone wants that shirt. No, that's a good point. I will sell you that shirt. Add that <laughs> CD. And see, I was going to go with best worst choreography, but then it struck me as we were sitting here that I needed to talk about the fact that Kelly Copeland can't speak the English language. So I'm going to go with best worst <laughs> pronunciation. So little background here, the uh, namesake of the show, as well as it's like writer, producer, director is Kenneth Copeland's daughter, Kenneth Copeland being the famous spit on my hand to cure COVID public airplanes or jet tubes full of demons thing. I, a crazy person. He's also worth, almost a billion dollars. So when his daughter was like, 
Dirty, I want a TV show. He made her this television show. The problem is... What did she say? She appears to have a mouthful of big league chew. Yeah, hard to hard to say what she At said. all times, there is no part of the South that that <laughs> accent is from. And it is fantastic. Alabama actually has a big league chew accent. That's, that's Oh, there you go. There you go. They yeah. give it to you at birth. The doctor like spanks you and then puts yep. the dip in your mouth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought it sounded like um, she'd made a deal with the devil where she gets her own TV show, but in return, every single word she says has to have a Y in it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you've got some idea of what we're about to talk about. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back to tell you all about Super Kid Academy, The Intruder. Super Kid Academy. That's right. We, we were more on the beat than, than they ever were than in the that kids show. were, yep. <laughs> okay, how about now? Nope. Higher. Got to be higher. Ah, dang. Oh, hey, guys. Uh, what are you doing? Sorry, we're uh, we're building a shield around our computer so nobody can see what we're doing. Yeah, so all our website stuff is completely secret no matter what. Guys, if you want to protect your privacy online, why don't you try IP Vanish? What's IP Vanish? IP Vanish is a virtual private network, a VPN for short. A VPN is a super important tool that helps you safely browse the internet. You can use a VPN on your computers, your tablets, your phones, even things like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. And when you use a VPN, all your data is encrypted. What you're reading, what you're searching, what you're watching, whatever it is that you're doing. Okay, so no need to build a giant wall around your computer. Is that what you're saying? I mean, yeah, there was there was there was never a need for that to, uh, at any point. No, but Man. no, you do not need to build a giant wall around your computer. Mm, I don't know, Marsh. We already spent a lot of money on this wood and these nails. A lot of money. So much. Well, for listeners of the show, IP Vanish is offering an incredible 65% off. That's just $3.49 for the first month or $31.49 for the whole year. Wow. That is way more affordable than everything we spent for the wall. Very. That's all the wooden stuff. Yeah. Yeah. A good deal. Well, everyone go to ipvanish.com forward slash awful to claim 65% savings. They've got plans starting at just $3.49 or $31.49 for the year. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotional offerings. You can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best. They're rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot. That's with more than 6,000 reviews. Show these guys some love. They are repeat sponsors. And remember, it's ipvanish.com forward slash awful to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. All right, Marsh, we're in. Kelly. Kelly Copeland. Thanks so much for coming in. Mm, no problem, furlers. What? Sorry, are you, are you, are you chewing gum? No, this is just a Turk. Wow. Yikes. Uh, okay. <sighs> okay, right. Um, so we got a chance to check out Commander Kelly. Um, you named the show and the character after yourself. My name is Kelly. Right. Okay. So for the script, what you've written is the kids my dad brought me. I'm pinning that, by the way. The kids my dad brought me. Dance and sing around, and then Carmen sings the end thing. Or and then the, Kermit sings and, the end thing, yeah. Okay, Kelly, uh, that's that's not a show. You see how that's not a show, right? Yeah, we can't make that. Not even for kids. That's mm -mm. nothing. My dad was with the billion dollars. So we'll start filming I'll on call Monday? Carmen's agent right now. Nice. I'm pretty sure that's just Carmen. Yeah, yeah, probably just Carmen. Billion dollars. We're totally in. What? Billion. Well, dollars. Wow. <laughs> and we're back. And we're going to open up on a team of, I believe, flight attendant children <laughs> breaking into a house, into a bedroom where an adult is asleep in the bed. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> I was really hoping this was like the Christian version of Don't Wake Daddy. Jesus sits up out of bed. They all have to go back to the start. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I did have a music note at this point, which is uh, I'm going to have to jump over some 8-bit snakes in this 2D dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we learned that they found what's called the super translator in this bedroom, in the closet. But they're looking at the door of the closet, which is closed. And they're like, look, the super translator, which is <laughs> yeah. we're looking at a door. But OK, so some thing they found some like magical thing. 
Yeah, I'm very bothered by this whole super translator thing, which we will find later out is a way of getting from one place to another. So it's a transporter or a teleporter, but no, they keep calling it a translator. But the other <laughs> thing I'm really bothered about as they talk about this, these various different kids, is all of them can't get their lines out. They garble their words so much that I need a fucking super translator just to understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah, they go into the closet, come back out, and they're in subtitles. Okay, this is much easier. <laughs> this, this is better. This is much better, yeah. It's also very weird because, like, this this show, this is the first episode. It starts incredibly jargon heavy, but like three minutes from now, they're going to introduce all of this stuff. There's no mm. reason for them to fucking the first 10 pages of Dune this thing. But for some reason, they're like, let's use the super translator to fight the NME. Have you got the laser disc? Four six seven two. Right. I thought you'd sent me the wrong YouTube link. I thought you sent me one that wasn't like that didn't have the start on it. That was just like, oh, this is cold open. I looked for another copy. Yeah, all of my notes are just, uh, Heath, are you sure this is the first episode? Because I have no fucking idea what's happening right now. It's a cold open, like Marsh said. It's very exciting. It, we don't know exactly. It's going to be revealed to us. It's, it's it's very good writing. Yeah. So they make it through the door, but as they do. The robot, yeah, they have a robot, trips, <laughs> and that wakes up who the, the person whose room it is, and it's it's Carmen. It's Christian <laughs> singer, songwriter, yeah. Carmen. Carmen, the musical artist. I Okay, so I have questions about the guy who has a magical closet that attracts children to his bedroom. Mm. <laughs> we'll, we'll let that go, I guess. Yes. It's Carmen here. And he's, so he's wearing a Yankees jersey and it, I didn't like what happened to me yeah. in this moment. I was like, go Yankees. Okay. Don't get roped in. <laughs> don't get, you're getting roped in. The fact that he's walking up like that, I really want to wake him up with like a stonking erection as well because it's the middle <laughs> of the night. Oh, God. <laughs> Just excited about the Yankees. And as you say, he's got this weird space warp in his bedroom cupboard. And I thought the rich guy had a portal in his closet that attracted children to it would have been a way more convincing defense of Jeffrey Epstein than the one Lawrence Krauss tools should go with. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so Carmen follows the children into the magical closet. It's not a good start to a movie. That's what happens now. Yeah. And then a bad guy also comes in, and we know this is a bad guy because he walks... Uh, Bad guyishly. Yeah. I yeah, I thought they'd been chased by a mime. That's, that's how <laughs> old the top he is at all points. Well, yeah, visually that's what we're looking at. We do know he's a bad guy though, because he's wearing a uniform that says N M E on it, which mm -hmm. right. like like enemy, but yeah? the letters N M E. <laughs> I've got a confession to make at this point, which is I did not get that N M E sounded like enemy until about halfway through this. <laughs> And in, in my defense, that's because NME in England is the New Musical Express, a very long running indie magazine. So I was like, why is the guy from the NME, is he trying, are these kids in an up and coming post punk band from the nineties and he's trying to get an interview? Is that what's happening that here? And they're, they're running from the NME. So much better. Yeah. That's disappointing. It wasn't that. Like one of these kids is going to carve serious on his arm with a blade to prove how uh, really into, uh, post punk they are. <laughs> Yeah, so he's going to report back to his boss. This is Major Dread, and Major Dread looks like um, Dom DeLuise in a cape. I was going to say me during quarantine, but I like yours better. Okay. <laughs> also, a swimming cap. I don't know why he has a swimming cap. Yep, a lot of the costumes in this one are very. Uh, can we use the box of costumes from the church play from last <laughs> week? <laughs> Yeah, I agree, because I don't think this was a swimming cap. What it looked like for me was it looked, because he had a cloak on as well, and it looked like he'd fallen asleep during a hair treatment at the salon, because he had his little cap on, <laughs> yeah, he had the dye in, he had the cloak <laughs> over his clothes. He was sleeping in front of his camera when the guy, when the bad guy called him. So does this guy just sleep in front of his camera all the time? Is that is that where he is at all points? <laughs> and when the, when the guy called him, what I really wanted as well to be like, hey, bad guy, no, sorry, you're on mute. No, you've got to click join with computer <laughs> audio. Right, go down to audio settings. There's a little up arrow next to the microphone. I'm not a cat. I'm in, here in real life. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, not a cat. cat. I'm, I'm Major I'm Dread. I'm not a cat. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. But yeah, Major Dread, he's like, yeah, follow those kids. And I just wanted to throw this out. He's like, follow them and destroy their show or I'll kill you. And I feel like the threat wasn't necessary. You know, he's already doing the job, Major Dread. Carrot and stick, dude. Carrot and stick. <laughs> okay. But that henchman guy was literally making the jerk-off motion 
while he was getting this speech from Major he was Dredd doing that mm-hmm. in this yeah. children's movie, to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> so he hangs up on his hench person, and now Major Dredd is going to do a little monologue to himself. Uh, this is where we learn that they pirate the broadcasts of NME with hope and love. And then he scares himself by saying the words hope and love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's like, so the bad guy's agenda is stopping broadcast piracy. So the good guys are basically like Pirate Bay or something. Yeah. It's like, yeah, home Christian broadcasting is killing the evil villain industry <laughs> and it's illegal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. But this guy represents the evil atheist anti-pirating <laughs> thing, whatever. Big, not pirates. And we, by the way, are not going to get an explanation of that until right now in the movie. Mm. Right now, we're going to get some narration. Like, the narrator was asleep at his desk, and he was like, oh, shit, sorry. Uh, all the world's networks were taken over by an Emmy. <laughs> You're absolutely right, because I think he was asleep, because the, the narrator comes in with, it seems like years now since the bad thing happened. It's like, you're the narrator. You're the omniscient narrator. Be more specific. It <laughs> seems like years now. Could you not have just told us how long it's actually been? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's been a fuckload of time <laughs> since the bad guys took over. Right. <laughs> and to be clear, they're saying American Christians in 1992 just couldn't get their message out. It was very <laughs> difficult for them. Yeah, they couldn't because obviously the world, you know, has this big, sc- scary, evil NME broadcasting corporation. And first of all, can you imagine a world where all the broadcast networks are owned by a handful of giant monopolistic media conglomerates? <laughs> that is a terrifying idea. But we find out that NME is a secret acronym for Notoriously Malicious Enterprises. And there's a lot to say about that. Because one, it's not that secret <laughs> acronym. You just told us what it is. So if you know, clearly <laughs> lots of people know. Also, not an acronym. That's an initialism. Thank you, Marsh. I, I was furious about that. Like, if you said it, enemy, you could say it's an acronym. But they say yeah. N-M-E. It's not, yeah. And how do you keep an acronym secret as well? Because if, if it's if it's obviously an acronym, it's like, why are those in block capitals? That looks like an acronym. Like you're very much giving the game away. And what I love is kind of like, you know, because it's secret, we own literally all of broadcasting now because we are the NME. Oh, okay. Who's, who or what is the NME? Um, not telling. I'm not telling. I'm not saying. <laughs> no, no. Secret. Their HR videos are a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the thing is, they're called the notoriously malicious enterprises, right? Did they start out as a notoriously malicious enterprises? Because that's very presumptuous to start from the opening gate as notoriously malicious. I don't think it's possible to do that. You can't start notoriously anything. No, unless you're like just that arrogant to like, no, we're, we're, we're going to get there. You know, we're like notorious <laughs> B.I.G. It's right. like he wasn't just called B.I.G. and then added notorious later. He was like, I'm, I'm going to be that. Or maybe that is what happened. They only added notoriously once they gained notoriety. But if so, that means they would have been called the M.E. before that. And if so... That is an acronym, and it's one you can actually keep secret because you could say we're just the me. So they've right. shot themselves in the foot by adding the N. Yeah. Do you think uh, Biggie was like the subtly B-I-G at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> the Your friend's B-I-G. B-I-G. Yeah. <laughs> just another B-I-G. And I, I was thinking about the enemy as well. Like, I guess they came to own all these broadcast companies, presumably after a series of mergers from existing broadcast companies. So they were like NME MNAs. <laughs> and then eventually, once they'd done enough mergers and acquisitions, they'd have formed a multinational enterprise or an NME MNE MNAs. <laughs> so, thought through this so hard. <laughs> But yeah, this is supposed to be a takedown of MTV. And what's great about this is that they're trying to get from MTV to evil apocalypse. So they're like, yes, we started out by showing violence on television and then we murdered people. Seems like a jump. I know it does seem like a jump to murder people on television right after that. But yeah, that's what we ended up doing. Yeah, and they have evil atheist kids at NME, and we know they're evil because they wear all black, and the girls Uh have crimped hair. So (laughs) those are the evil kids that are atheists. Are all of their broadcast shows exclusively filled with kids? Because if so, and that's all of broadcasting in this universe, that means in this universe, 9-11 was announced by children. Adorable. (laughs) Mm. And created by children, right? Made up by children. (laughs) Kept getting the lines wrong. 
Yeah. So I have a question about the technology here. Uh, allegedly, the super kids fight back. They do their pirating because they have the last free transmitter and they keep it secret. Mm-hmm. What is that? What are they saying they have? <laughs> it feels like you could make another transmitter. Right. <laughs> I have no idea. But there's one, it's like a, a but there's like a VCR and they have, there's one left that they have and they pirate with that, apparently. Right. At least they use it for entirely productive means and not just for a glorified vanity project. <laughs> as, they, <laughs> as we'll see what they actually do. For Kenneth Copeland's daughter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's a lovely line in this as well, where it says, the organization used entertainment as a disguise to expand its reach, says this Christian movie. <laughs> and then the next line is, they attempt to control the world with a message of fear and evil, says this Christian movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and now it's time to actually meet the squad. We're going to get our first words from Commander Kelly in this scene. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I know I hinted at this at the beginning. I don't know where Kelly Copeland's accent is from, but it's definitely from a time and a place when English had not fully been mastered. This was like early. <laughs> it's from Big League Chew, Alabama. Yeah. Yep. And this is also where we're going to meet the kids. Yeah. She says, we interrupt this for a mix of hope. Although she actually says, we're in a red dirt for a murder herb. <laughs> well, actually, what specifically what she says, right, is we are interrupting this regularly disgusting program with a message of hope. And I thought, isn't that the ad copy most of your advertisers really want you guys to use? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Manscaped has been mad about Manscaped Man for a while. <laughs> but this is where we meet the this team. This episode is sponsored by IP Vanish. They could really prevent us from doing this if they would just get <laughs> Yeah, they could probably get you hooked up with a secret transmitter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got a bunch of those. I mean, if, if a transmitter is transmitting secretly, it is going against the purpose of transmitting. It's like we're transmitting, but nobody can hear or tell that we're transmitting. <laughs> this, this block of wood is a super secret transmitter. <laughs> Not even I can pick it up. So yeah, we're, we're going to go through the team. There's uh, Missy, who I have down as Jean Benet Ramsey's dead body double. Yeah, I, I also picked up that that was absolutely Jean Benet Ramsey. So I'm glad we are sympathetic on that. Yep. I did not. I'm proud to say I did not notice that that was like Jean Benet Ramsey. Liar. <laughs> Moving on. Liar. You're lying. There's Alex, who is the African American. Guarantee that they refer to him that way in the script. Yeah, he looks like he's been forced to do this at gunpoint all the way through. <laughs> yep. Valerie, who I have down in my notes, says meh. Well, Valerie somehow looks 100% like a 45-year-old lesbian, and I don't yeah, understand does. how an 8-year-old can do that. Mm. No, she should be introducing you to her partner and riding around on a motorcycle <laughs> in my wife's hometown for sure. <laughs> There's Paul, who was definitely at Charlottesville. He will never convince me Paul <laughs> does not grow up to be at Charlottesville. <laughs> Whose streets? Paul's streets. That's right. <laughs> and then rapper... The greatest character oh ever. <laughs> First of all, they went with the description. Didn't even bother to give this kid a name. And yes, as Heath mentioned, he has a sideways cap and a CD on a string around his neck. He's the best. Well, they gave him a name. His name is Rapper. Yeah, Rapper. his name is Rapper. Yeah, and he's he's some he's appropriating like twelve different cultures. They couldn't decide. He's got like a dashiki <laughs> and like. Rasta thing going on and he's wearing like a red Chinese prom dress like an asshole it makes no sense and then oh my god they they introduce him and he actually does that like self hug thing oh it's yeah funny. this was a hate crime this moment was a hate crime in the movie it's called a b-boy stance heat. my my theory on rapper is he was christened rapper by his parents and at this point he has to lean into that but without his heart isn't in it. He doesn't want to be a rapper, but he's called rapper. Because if you imagine if you were called rapper and you didn't rap and didn't like rap, your life would be not worth living. So at least yeah. everybody's, oh, rapper, do you rap? <sighs> yes. And then he dro drops a bit down. Yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. He's going to rap soon. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. He is. He's going to he's going to rap once, but he's going to give it his not all. So I'm, I'm, we're, we're ready for it. <laughs> he's going to give it his sum. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Techno the Robot who I found somehow lazier than the kid named Rapper, which is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do any techno music. No. <laughs> it seems like he would have done a like a sh really annoying house beat at one point while the rapper tries to rap over it. It could have made it fit. Yeah, he'll be in for like 
one set of words and then he vanishes and then reappears. It, we'll get to it. We'll get yeah, to it. Yeah, it's a waste of a robot completely. <laughs> and underneath all of this, we hear kind of a theme tune. And essentially, this entire song is... Did you know there are lots of words that end in E? <laughs> Here's some of them. Although in fairness, we are going to use the word B for 50% of the rhymes in this. So we don't yes. know all yeah. the words that end in, in E. Also in fairness, this is the best they do with rhyming by mm. far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, very much. Are you saying Academy doesn't rhyme with Academy? <laughs> I'm, okay, it's not A equals A. Yes, Marsh. I'm not. <laughs> they, they, they rhyme tautologically. <laughs> That's yeah. true. So now we cut to the headquarters and the blue squad, that's our team, is turning in the footage that they have, again, quote from the movie, about gang activity, which I'm going to go ahead and say is a little intense for a kid's television program. (laughs) Gang activity in Center City. Yeah. (laughs) Turns out it was actually a hoax by Antifa is what we're learning here. (laughs) It's, It's so weird that we don't see any of this footage. We don't know anything about their mission. It's just kind of like, oh, here's the tape, by the way. Cheers. And then Kelly's just like, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. That'll be a perfectly fine way to, to start this scene. Why not? <laughs> also, did they have a dig on the guardian angels here at one point? No, I think it was the opposite. I thought they were, it was, it was like, oh, the gang activity was actually started by the evil gang and then framed on the guardian angels. So it wasn't the guardian angels fault. Oh, they were saying that the vigilantes were a positive thing because they have the word angel in it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Isn't that guy running for something? The like the guy who started the fucking Guardian Angels? Isn't he a Republican trying to get some spot now? I mean, I'm not surprised to hear it. I think he's a New York politician now. Based on him him being promoted in Kelly Copeland's the children's show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this all tracks now that I think about it. But she asks them, are they sure that they weren't followed? And this is, of course, where rapper raps and it is amazing. <sighs> it's beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to be that guy, but you know, they wanted the black kid to play rapper. I've no never been question. anything more sure of that. In my life. I, I, <laughs> it's only when the black kid's parents said he's not going to do that, that they hired a second kid who looks like a gurning Steve Guttenberg to take over the role of rapper. That is yeah. correct. And they were like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't want to make like the one black kid be the rapper. We'll make him literally Urkel. That's not a problematic <laughs> thing. <laughs> Okay, but why? So this is where we get to, right? She's like, are you sure you weren't followed? And they're like, yes. And rapper's like, we weren't followed. No, we weren't. Please, mom and dad, to destroy these tapes. <laughs> <laughs> but then the alarm goes off. It's like, bah, bah, bah. you were too followed. And everyone immediately turns to Alex, who, as we just said, is the only black member of the cast. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Alex, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> And what they ask him for is crazy. They said, did you guard the door until it closes on the other side? Well, if he did that, how is he getting through it? It's like you're supposed to wait from the other side until the door closes. Yeah, but then he's he's just stuck in Carmen's bedroom and nobody wants to be there. They had a separate door for they had a separate door for him, probably. <laughs> separate but equal, yeah. Alex, I'm pretty sure we all agreed that this was a suicide mission for you, and yet you made it through the transmitter. <laughs> and I'll just say, through all of this. Paul looks like he cannot even be slightly fucked to be in this. And this is when I started Googling what happened to these kids after this particular episode. Because many of these kids go on to do several other episodes of this. Not Paul. Paul, I think, does a couple. But then after filming like two more of these, he went on to play, first of all, he played a young Ed Gain. So he did that when he was like 16. And then he came out as gay and seems really happy with his life. He's got like a blog of him and his husband and his kid. And he seems really, really happy and refused to be involved in these again. Fantastic. Not not the case with Alex, who is in a follow-up in 2013, 21 years after this original. And it's the only thing he's done on his IMDb page. I love that Marsh went into this ridiculously long rabbit hole. (laughs) How were you not fascinated by what happened to these (laughs) propaganda kids? I just assumed Kenneth Copeland killed and ate them. I just I didn't (laughs) want to find out about the appearances that are all exactly two years apart on Halloween. Valerie was in all of the all five of these movies, and her only other credit is for one of the film where she was the makeup artist. (laughs) Wow. Bless. Uh, yeah, where did I learn to do makeup? Maybe on a little film called Commander Kelly and the Super Kid Cat. You haven't heard of it? Okay, yeah. well then just hold still. I'll turn you. In. You haven't heard of it? I can sing you a song. It might uh, jog your memory. 
Oh, super can can. <laughs> okay. But now that I know that Paul has escaped, Paul, if you're out there and you're listening, and Paul, I know you have, I need you to get in touch because I know you've got Kelly Copeland stories and I oh, need those yeah. Kelly Copeland stories. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> he's very Googleable. Did her dad ever come to set? He, no, he was, yes, yes, he's in several other films. <laughs> He plays a fighter pilot in a later episode. Wait, are you serious? Kenneth Copeland is in these? He's in, he's certainly in the 2013 uh, follow-up. I really need you to know less details about this, but I am fascinated. I will admit. If you're going to bring me in to to do something, I'm going to put the effort in. You know, I'm not going to just kind of fly by. I'm not Cara Santa Maria. She turns up two minutes before, hasn't watched the film and blags it. I'm going to put the fucking effort in, guys. Shots fired. (laughs) She also thinks it's Jeff, like an idiot. <laughs> you heard me. She's actually really smart. She's smart. She, she's fine. great. She's great. <laughs> That's right, everyone. Tweet at Kara about what he said about <laughs> Gift versus Jeff. <laughs> He's always going to have this opinion. <laughs> All right. So now Commander Kelly announces that the intruder has been captured. And this, of course, is Carmen, the first person who came through. And we start with him being threatened by Techno the Robot. I did not know who Carmen was. He's not a thing in the UK. We don't (laughs) really have that whole thing going on in the UK. So I just thought this guy 100% has to have been a porn actor. 100%. He couldn't look more (laughs) like a porn actor. Thank you. They actually say... Oh, here's the intruder, but he looks harmless. And I was like, no, the fuck he doesn't. (laughs) He he looks like Carmen, the singer, (laughs) and he was in a bedroom where he lured kids into a closet. Absolutely not. (laughs) Opposite of harmless. Mm. So we have a little not at all funny banter about techno is like, hey, one false move and all. And Carmen's like, what? And he's like, I don't know. I just wanted to say that. And he's like, why are you in the show? And he's like, just shut the fuck up. Why are you in the show, Carmen? Why are you in the show? (laughs) But yeah, this is where Commander Kelly introduces all the kids. I just want to say this for the record. Missy definitely turns on the flirt when she meets Carmen. It is very uncomfortable. She's like seven years old. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And then I just have to point this out. Even though Techno has already been introduced, after she introduces the kid, Techno insists on being introduced again. Like he's on the fucking C segment of the skating (laughs) atheist. And this is where Alex is explaining how Carmen got there. And he says, you were transported or rather translated to another place. It's like, no, not rather. You were good with transported. You ruined it with translation. <laughs> you corrected yourselves and then you mm. ruined it again. Yeah. <laughs> and then he replies to that, like in the Bible. And I wrote in my notes, nope, not at all <laughs> like the Bible. <laughs> You've read the Bible. Is this related to anything in the Bible? They're quite certain it is. But no, absolutely it is not. No. Yeah, it says, like, Enid in Genesis. I could find absolutely nothing about this. Was it Enid or Enoch? I thought it was Enoch It was probably Enoch. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Regardless, it it doesn't help. That doesn't make it better. He wasn't translated anywhere through a country singer's closet. So (laughs) Yeah, I feel like I would have remembered a teleporter in Genesis. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So Carmen says, oh, you mean like in the Bible? And then Commander Kelly is like, yeah, well, we actually call that the manual. But yes. This is just like in the Bible. And I really wanted to see these kids using the Bible as a manual for stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Just like trying to draw circles that don't quite make it all the way around the shit. (laughs) They knock out Alex, start a timer for 48 hours. Don't worry, we have a manual. (laughs) Ah, didn't think of that example, but there you go. Yep, that's another one. So he's like, so tell me what this place is all about. And they're like, okay, sit down and we'll show you. And he's like, okay, I will. Because... They don't know who has the last line before the musical number, so they just keep doing intro lines for it. (laughs) Okay, we will sing. Da 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 da. I say da 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 da. Okay, now it's going back down. Seven, (laughs) eight. But we don't. We don't go to the music number immediately. We smash cut to a kid getting shot in the neck. Which is what the fuck was this? Yeah. So we we find out, not right away though, yes, Marsh, I was shocked by this. We find out after a second, like, oh, this is the evil atheist television feed. But we're watching some kind of henchman about to literally shoot a baby in the neck with a gun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's going to shoot a child in the neck with a gun. That's that's the type of stuff that was on, you know, secular television in 1992. Yeah, that's where MTV was going in 1992. It's shooting a baby in the neck. Yep. Typical Nirvana video right there. Yep. (laughs) But yeah, they interrupt. 
and they're going to sing what I think we can all agree is the catchiest song of the film, Super Kid Academy. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's it's a song of the summer. It's the absolute song of the summer. <laughs> it's a banger. It's a fucking banger. It's my Gungam style. But here's my question. How many times had they sung Super Kid Academy before you realized that the entire song would just be them singing Super Kid Academy <laughs> over and over and over again? I didn't care. I was in. Because it's like three minutes long. <laughs> Also, they're not singing it. Are they singing it live? Because Thank you. we okay. see them watching them sing it. Right. What did they do to Carmen? They said to Carmen, oh, yeah, uh, you want to know what this is about? Well, watch this. And then they just turn a video on and then stand watching that for like three and a half minutes next to him. Is that it? But then they, yep. we watch them perform it in the just show him if the, you're like you're. There's no reason to break into the feed of with your pirate thing to show exposition to Carmen about what you're going to do. Well, it's not even exposition. It's just the name of the place you're it, in. The three they minutes attempted solid. for it to be exposition. And at the end, he's like, okay, so you guys, I got the name of your thing. Is that, <laughs> do you have anything else? While, while they try and dance, and I have never seen a group of people look more out of sync. And it, it's, it seems like they weren't dancing to the beat. They were dancing to the rate of nuclear decay. Like they knew the next <laughs> beat was coming at some point, but for them, it was impossible to accurately predict when it was coming. <laughs> Oh, the dancing here is only explained by the fact that they got there on the day and Kelly Copeland was like, and you all learned the dance moves that I mailed to your houses. And they were like, what? And she was like, I mailed them to your house. And they were just like, fuck, fake it, fake it, fake it. A group of <laughs> relatively talented children faking their way through a dance they're making up on the spot is the only description for what these children are about to do. Oh, God, absolutely. Because they keep singing about how they're training to fight off the enemy. And I can only assume the enemy is rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote in my notes, beach body classes are better dances than this. Ooh, but they did nail the acronym there it was an acronym for a second in that it was. moment in the song and not an initialism so good job guys I, yeah one point well we're gonna give him one point i mean i hadn't realized at this point that enemy was enemy so i did not pick up on that still. <laughs> <laughs> i'll let you know when it, when it clicks oh and we also get quite a few special effects during this because they they can't <laughs> have a shot of these children dancing for more than four seconds because it somehow dissolves to worse than it is so we get cross fades and star fades <laughs> yeah we also see a little bit of their technology here. So they apparently they broadcast their, quote, satellite jamming sequence in order to pirate this channel somehow. The satellite jamming sequence is just a number and they show yep. us the number. Mm -hmm. so, so they're broadcasting their secret number that tells everybody how they're getting into this feed. And the idea behind the technology is you shoot your camera feed at a satellite and you just and then you have to type in the correct like six digit number and they did yeah, yeah it's it's wonder woman 1987 technology <laughs> <laughs> hacking the thing about how they do the, hack, the do that kind of hacking as well this led me to a revelation because in the background you've got loads of other kids doing the hacking and i thought those kids didn't pass the audition to be these kids which means these kids were better than those kids. <laughs> How bad were those kids? Yeah. The ones we're seeing can't deliver a line. We can't hear and understand a word they fucking say. Oh. They're off rhythm. They don't do anything. The kids in the background have got to have been pretty special in those auditions. I want those audition tips. <laughs> I want to see the evil atheist kids doing their music videos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to that? These are the questions. I guess we did see the shooting in the neck thing. It's mostly shooting in the neck yep, base. It's mostly so. shooting mm -hmm. in the neck base. Though. I guess that's, that's what's happening. Some solid dancing. And I think uh, I'm going to need a few minutes to make my TikTok dance move for Megan the Stallion's new song based on the moves I just learned from this movie. So we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back with more Super Kid Academy, The Intruder. Oh, ow, man. Oh, he thought that is what's, what's the matter? Yeah, my arm is really bothering me. Oh, God. Yeah, I can see that. Um, Why don't you go and see a doctor? I'm not sure I'm a doctor guy. What? I don't think so. That's silly. Come on. Hey, podcast listener. Has this ever happened to you? Probably not, because most people go to the doctor when they need a doctor. But how many times have you heard this? Oh, Heath, um, you seem really down lately. Yeah. Have you considered going to therapy? Nah, not really sure I'm a therapy guy. Oh, okay. I mean, that sounds entirely reasonable to me. Cool. Therapy is a great way to deal with the stuff that's interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals. There's no shame in getting therapy. In fact, 
taking care of your mental health isn't selfish. It's a responsible way to take care of your brain and the people you love, just like going to the regular doctor. Okay, maybe I can just treat my elbow myself. Figure. Yeah, I, I, do I don't right. think you can. Mm. And thanks to this week's sponsor, BetterHelp, you can get professional counseling done securely online. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. The service is available for clients worldwide, and there's a broad range of expertise available, which might not be locally available in many areas. So if you need a therapist who's LGBTQ friendly, secular, or sex and sex work positive, they can help you find someone. You know what? I think I just need puppy pictures. If people send me puppy pictures, my elbow's going to be fine at that point. Really? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Plus, BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. No awkward therapist breakups, just the care you need when you need it. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. It's fine. I'm going to be fine. It's just a lot of stress at work. Once things slow down at work, my elbow is going to be great. You think your work is making your elbow swell up like that? Yes. So visit betterhelp.com slash awful. That's better H E L P and join over 1 million people who have taken care of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash awful. BetterHelp because therapy really is for everyone. You know what? I think I'm going to take a walk. Nice, refreshing walk. That's going to just clear my elbow right up. Mm. Oh, okay. So you're telling me you've created an interdimensional base to promote Christianity using a pirated signal against a murderous, tyrannical TV network that dominates all forms of media. We're sure do. And okay. And you use teams of children who sometimes have an Android assistant, but sometimes not. Uh, they gather intel on the evil TV network. Mission accomplished. And through the grace of God, creator of the universe, I, Carmen, have been teleported here to help you with your mission. Personal learn. And, and the way I can help is sing a song. Sure. Uh, okay, uh, I guess I'm in. I forgot my glasses. Shut the fuck up, Alex. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, fuck you, Alex. And we're back. So now the kids realize they have the Christian singer and TV star Carmen. Well, okay, sorry, not Carmen. They have Mario. His name is Mario. <laughs> okay. They have renamed Carmen Mario. They might as well rename him Bobbity Boopity Pizza. <laughs> well, this is the thing, because I did not know who Carmen was, remember? And I was just thinking, oh, yeah, he just looks like a porn actor. And when rapper the kid said, I've seen this guy before, you know, he said, you look familiar. And I, and I wrote in my notes, are you a plumber? Are you here to fix the pipes? And then the next <laughs> line was, I know who you are. You're He's Mario. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's all coming together. <laughs> Yeah. When they all recognized him, I wanted to be like, oh, please tell me he got caught blowing someone in a bathroom like George Michael. Please, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, to follow that up, he says, yeah, you know, I was a famous actor and then I heard about a man and I was like, OK, my theory is coming true. I get where this is going. A simple carpenter. Well, I had that because he said, you know, I heard about a man who offered eternal life. And I wrote, please tell me Mario sold his soul to Satan. But like, anyway, so I had to go to this crossroads in Clocksdale, Mississippi. <laughs> and there was a guy, he had a dog. <laughs> right. But the point is that he found Jesus and it made his music have meaning. And and then the whole world turned against him because he became a Christian. What? Mm. It's your movie every time. There's not yet been a single Christian film, nay, a single Christian sentence where they haven't accidentally said, and yeah, once you find Jesus, pretty much the only people who want to hear from you are Christians. Okay, but <laughs> Carmen literally got rich by doing specifically Christian yeah. music. That's his he had story. To lie. He had to lie about his own career for this movie. Yeah, but instead it's like, and then they took my program off the air and it's like the bar for what constitutes Christian persecution has not changed in 20 years. Mm -mm. Oh, they took my program off the air. I am therefore persecuted. <laughs> they also burned his house down, apparently. Okay, no, that sounds more like persecution in fairness. That does <laughs> yeah. sound a bit more persecuting. That was a weird escalation. He was like, yeah, no, they, uh, they canceled my television program and 
killed my whole family in a fire. You know, it's a one, two, three step <laughs> process. And, and we also learned that they, they burned his house down and then they threatened him. They were like, Hey, remember when we burned your house down? Don't be Christian anymore. Something bad will happen to you. <laughs> Like burning my next house down? I feel like you guys escalated really fast before you did the threat. If it, that would have been shit, we feel like we kind of blew our load with burning your house down. <laughs> and I'm going to point out this is the moment in the movie that I realized NME sounds like enemy. So this is where we are. Yep, this is we where we are. It's very good writing. It's subtle. You don't know it what's is. happening. It, slow no. burn. It's slow in, burn. It's too late. <laughs> Eternal sunshine of the Christian movie watching mind. <laughs> <laughs> and. Then they all have to say mean things about enemy for burning his house down. And they're all like, those razzafrazzin, rotten, tootin', mootin', bootin', no good, nanny nookers. <laughs> and Kelly, of course, is like, look, that sounds hard, but Jesus? Music number. <laughs> I was like, come on, just do your fucking song. Stop doing the like, da 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 Just go. Just go do your song. I know you're yeah, going to do Yeah, because she song. doesn't even say Jesus. She sounds, that's, that sounds hard, but I think I can tell you. What would help? And then she walks away and they go and stand in the middle of the floor and start their music number. And I thought, that is so weird if you think about that as a conversation. <laughs> but yeah, I, I know you're traumatized about the house burning down and your life going to shit. But um, anyway, oh, are, you, <laughs> you, go over there are you walking? Do you have a follow up? I feel like you're just walking away in silence. <laughs> All right. Well, Marsh, you're saying that like someone who hasn't had to extricate themselves from conversations at the bar at QED. So I don't know. What, <laughs> check your privilege, Marsh, because Ethan and I have had to do that multiple times. At QED, I've got an earphone <laughs> in that I can pretend is making noise at any point. Oh, <gasps> sorry. I just I think I've got a thing I need to deal with. I'll be back uh, around. But um, you, you guys have fun. I have I to do a to, choreographed I'm... dance right now, but not here. <laughs> Keith and I are going to come with ear buds that are very clearly not connected to something to the next community it's like oh oh sorry nope yeah gotta go yeah either that or you're gonna come like uh randy at the pop-off meeting where you could take a radio receiver to see what's coming <laughs> into my ear <laughs> like, he didn't get anything i can play you the tips right now roll it back johnny carson no keep telling <laughs> keep telling him your story he's very interested <laughs> so yeah it's time for another music number and this one my friends this is a slow jam <laughs> and that's probably for the best because these kids are failing at swaying in unison for this particular number yeah the rapper kid by the way is furious he doesn't have a rap solo and he just has to try to sway in unison with this slow jam and he's not liking it no <sighs> they've all got different swaying strategies as well when they go to sit down because like one of them like sits like on the side of the legs to the side which is fine for swaying in one direction but then you're swimming <laughs> upstream to go the other way and then Alex sits with cross legs but his legs are too low which gives him nowhere to go when it comes to the sway and he just barely moves by there's, there's very inexperienced <laughs> swaying going on yeah there's a lot it's, it's, it's rough it's definitely definitely rough <laughs> the choreography here is so, I mean, I, I don't know much. I know that whoever choreographed this cried while they did it. They were like, God, this is my journey with Jesus. I am finally <laughs> getting it out there on Kelly Copeland's vanity project. The world will know my dance. Carmen <laughs> is holding back tears here. So maybe he did the choreography. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, Mario, not Carmen. Mario, the character in this. Yeah, watching these five disinterested kids slowly spinning is really helping him. It's really sorting it out. I did enjoy that Techno the Robot was part of the choreography. <laughs> but he, he's just spinning in a circle in the background because that's all they could get this 1992 robot copy of the Nintendo robot to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, Missy has a dramatic solo during their dream ballet and Commander Kelly practically side tackles her. She's like, this is my show, darn it. Get off the sturge. <laughs> And for the rest of them, this is the most disinterested dance number I've seen. It's it's the happy hands club from Napoleon Dynamite. That's what's <laughs> <Yep>. going on. <laughs> Absolutely. Now that said, Marsh, if you let us be on the main stage of QED in any of the upcoming years, we will end our segment with an exact recreation of this dance. <laughs> I make that promise to you here and now. <laughs> uh, almost worth it. Almost worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, the Australians put us up next to the educated girl. You have to. <laughs> I did like at the end of this too. So they finish singing and there's literally, I counted 15 seconds of just staring at Carmen because they're like, <laughs> we're done now. And he's 
terrified. He has no idea what to do. He just stares. Do I clap? Do I clap? And the thing is, this was a four minute, this was a four minute long song and dance, which came two minutes after the previous three minute long song and dance. In this 25 minute episode, there's just a solid block of not very much going on. It's it's remarkable. And then literally nothing going on. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. 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 All fill and all killer. So now, bafflingly, it's time for their live broadcast. So, so that was a, a recreational music number, but now it's time for their live broadcast which didn't they already do the live broadcast the first thing they did was the live yes, broadcast what do you did. guys do here let us show you now we, we interrupt with the live broadcast you've just done your live broadcast <laughs> six minutes ago have you forgotten that it's a new different <laughs> live broadcast and they do a little like christian news here I, I love this so much paul immediately takes the mic so paul by the way and mm. he begins with don't be <laughs> terrified which is weird advice for a kid's show yeah. He, and then he says, don't be discouraged. Praying is hard. You probably, <laughs> which is so sad. He's just like, yeah, you probably didn't uh, do the praying hard enough magic. <laughs> it's not working for you. Don't worry. It, it eventually works. Rapper, by the way, also doesn't get lines here, but he does do finger guns while he speaks. Right. He, he doesn't get a rap. So he has to do straight lines, but he he finger guns it. So it's like a rap to him. And then it, it gets to Alex, who just mangles out a series of noises. It's like, for God's back in the spear offer, but power, love, sound, mind. <laughs> it's like, are we, are we not going to read? We're happy with that one? Okay, we'll go with that take then. And um, Rapper looks so mad, so, so mad at how badly Alex just mangled his lines. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> then Missy, again, this is such a weird character slash choice for her. She comes out and she presents... Carmen slash Mario with a guitar. She says, this is my guitar. Please share your gift with us. And he's like, mm, I don't know. They did burn down my house and tell me not to. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but Carmen finally decides, okay, I'll sing you a song. And he's, <laughs> it's so bad. He starts playing and it's like, you remember the Will Ferrell as Satan thing where he's supposed to teach the guy who like wants to, you know, sell his soul to the devil how to be an amazing guitarist? Like Fred's got slacks, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's what's happening. <laughs> and he's so, so very bad. He's do, like, he's doing the, the jazz guy who's crushing it face while, while he's playing exactly two chords back and forth, but doing that face like he's killing it with different interesting stuff. Oh. Are they still broadcasting this live? Is this still their live broadcast? Or was it just those two minutes? Ooh. Unclear. Unclear. <laughs> Later on, he's going to say like that that's really helped him and he's going to go back and do even more of that. So maybe that was part of it, even though he was threatened not to. <laughs> very hard. Very hard yeah. to tell. And suddenly as he plays, all of the other kids who were otherwise working the machines are suddenly sat at his side. And I thought, please don't make all of those kids who are the class B slash Z kids try to clap in unison as well. But they do and <laughs> they don't. They don't. Genuinely during this song, if everyone listening to this podcast right now tried to simultaneously clap, they would do a better job than these kids do. <laughs> Just statistically speaking, you will do better simultaneously clapping with the rest of the podcast listeners mm. if you start now and finish eventually. But it's the simplest fucking thing. Like the guitar hero of this is red button, blue button, red button, blue button. That, like that's it. But they yep. can't clap. He can't. So he can't even get in rhythm. He's trying to do this very simple four, four quote groove. And he can't even get his singing in sync with the guitar player, who, by the way, is also him to be clear. <laughs> it's so bad. Now, these are, however, the most complex lyrics we're going to get in the show. And he's, You've done us the, I'm going to say, honor of transcribing these. <laughs> Do you mind if I read them and you guys can just insert your notes where you will? <laughs> oh, please give us a dramatic reading of Carmen's lyrics. Thank you. Using my BFA. Here we go. All my friends been wondering where my future lies since I took my stand for Christ and gave him my... Don't life. Say life. Oh, life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because not nothing rhymes. There's no other word that rhymes with eyes. No, nope. <laughs> eyes. <laughs> nope. Damn it. Damn. <laughs> you see, they're wondering just what's in store since I've quote found the way. Okay, okay. <laughs> quote found the way. He's furious here 
about his friends who clearly used air quotes about his stupid fucking <laughs> finding the way Christianity, and he wrote that into the song mm-hmm. to be mad yeah, at. He about. can't even cover that with intonation. He's got to write the word court in there. Yeah. <laughs> Found the way. Asshole is doing the jerk off gesture. That's what they did. <laughs> That's when the Lord stirs up my soul. And I quite clearly say, I'm going to start exactly song. That is. And I quite early say. <laughs> literally, yeah, literally that. Yes. Yeah. It's like old musical stuff. Terrible. All right. You got a verse for us, Eli? Oh, yeah. Here's the verse. I'm growing up to be born again, blood washed, spirit filled, okay. <laughs> testifying okay. child of the king. Blood washed? Yup. That is the one. Yeah. One of these what things the doesn't belong. What the fuck did that mean? So is that washed in blood or you've had your blood washed? Like a kind of <laughs> centrifugal yeah, thing, like taken out, dialysis. Put back in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's dialysis. Maybe he's got uh, kidney failure. We don't know. Could be a goop product we haven't heard of yet. He could have gotten the inside <laughs> scoop on one. I'm going to praise him in the morning, through the afternoon, till night, and then I'll dream about witnessing. Sing. Sing <laughs> He's so proud about rhyming king with any gerund we, he went with, <laughs> with witnessing. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Also, dreaming, dreaming about witnessing is the dullest thing to be dreaming about, surely. That is not, that's not a, an active thing to be doing. It's just like being there, being around. And isn't witnessing just like telling people about Christ? Not even seeing, doing, being around Christ. It's just like, hey guys, did you know about the whole Christ thing? Yeah. Yep. Right. And he admits here, he prays all the time, but he only sees Jesus when he's literally dreaming at night in mm. his song. That's it. Yeah. He continues, I'm going to walk and talk and act like Jesus, though I may get feathered and tarred. Okay, okay. First of all, the expression is tarred and feathered, right? Yep, absolutely. I'm pretty sure it goes the other way. So he better rhyme something with tarred here because oh, yeah, that was don't like worry. very important to him to end that line with tarred instead of feathered. Let's yeah, see I'm he very gets. interested in him talking exactly like Jesus as well, because I don't know how he is on like languages from two millennia ago, but I'd, I'd love to see him have a crack at it. Yeah, just an <laughs> Aramaic schizophrenic making people wash his feet. Exactly. <laughs> in fairness, Aramaic schizophrenic would rhyme better than half of the words in his song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's that rhyme for you, Heath. You ready? All right, he's got to rhyme something with Tard. Let's yep, see. Yeah, Tard, here we go. The world may try and stop my mission, but I'll grow with opposition. Because I'm an overcoming child of Bard. No, God. He rhymed God. Tard with God and switched yeah. around. Feathered and Tard had to be switched around so mm. we can rhyme with God badly. Yeah. The only person who rhymes Tard with God is Kelly, who yes, puts an R into that's all of the exactly words. exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Very clearly, Kelly Copeland wrote that lyric for him. I'm an overcoming child of God. God. <laughs> all right. Back to the verse here. The expressions on their faces change every single time. You know, the looks they give me are priceless, but so's this Holy <laughs> Ghost look on mine. Everybody makes fun of me. I hate their stupid faces. You know, like, <laughs> more anger about this into the song. <laughs> you see, now God wants us to share the Lord, right? Isn't that our Christian task? Questions in a song. Never a great idea. Mm. No answer. Just a rhetorical question. Is it? Moving on. <laughs> so when someone says, hey, what's happening, man? I say, brother, I thought you'd never ask. Ba-dum, ba-dum, bum, bum. <laughs> chorus. And then he does the chorus again. Yeah. Also, hey, what's happening, man, is a very generic opening gambit question for it. Like, it's the thing you, you say to someone when you first met them. So it's like, oh, I need to share my Christianness. But what they're saying is when you first met someone and they say, hey, how's it going? That's oh, I'm so glad you asked me that. Here's a bit of Jesus, which is exactly what they do. No, yeah. see, this is why you don't ask questions. You, this, yeah, I, I can't think of a worse man. answer to how's it going than I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> I would veto. I would be like, hey, whatever you're about to say, no, I say, I, I take it back. I don't care. Please, I don't know why I even asked. Is you're the, you're you have pamphlets on a stand on the street? I don't know why I would ever start asking you a question. <laughs> That's me. That's on me. And then he ends his final chorus with, because I'm a Bible totin', scripture quotin', sin defacing, devil chasing, chorus humming. <laughs> sin defacing? Yeah. Guitar more, strumming. More present participle, all rhyme. Yes, we get it. Those all rhyme. 
Good job. Gospel preaching, soul <laughs> preaching, <laughs> overcoming <laughs> child of God. Bing, king, ding, <laughs> ying. That's bing, thing. He didn't go with thing yet. This thing, thing's right out there. <laughs> he finished the song and I just wrote in my notes, yeah, to burn his house down too. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, his whole song is just so painfully, I don't care if you persecute me, I'll Christian anyway. But the thing is, no one's persecuting you Christians. Well, not in real life, in your fictional thing, you have your house burned down. But in real life, no one's persecuting you Christians. But also, you do care if they persecute you because you go out of your way to find anything you claim is persecution. Like you're working <laughs> your ass off to find any example of persecution, to manufacture one. Yeah, right. Like maybe write a song about Coptic Christians in Egypt. Maybe mm. I'll listen to your persecution <laughs> narrative. Go fuck yourself otherwise. Get out of here. <sighs> All right, well... I will need a few minutes to make my TikTok dance move for Carmen's amazing song that we just heard. So mm-hmm. we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back for the big finale of Super Kid Academy, The Intruder. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Satan, Prince of Darkness, and I call together this meeting of Christianity's bad guys. Christianity's bad guys. Let's do this. <laughs> uh, so, I hate to start this meeting off on such a somber note, but uh, I just got to say it, guys. Our membership standards have uh, they've slipped a bit. Really? Uh, membership standards? I mean, uh, look, look, look. Back in the day, it was me and Baphomet, you know, making witches, possessing mm-hmm. children, that mm-hmm. kind of right, stuff. Right, right. I mean, no offense, but like the ACLU, what is that guy doing here? Oh, I mean, he is very dedicated to the First Amendment. Mm-hmm. Dedicated to the First Amendment, I'm literally yeah. Satan. I mean, look at look at this. Look at this. MTV is a member. What is an MTV? Oh, that's a uh, it's a music video television channel. Music video television is an enemy of Christianity. Yes. Well, uh, some of the videos were pretty salacious, you know, for the time. For their time, I literally convinced the Egyptians to boil babies in their mother's milk. I okay. don't know how to. That's just weird. Bragging mm. thing. For okay, look, look, look at this. Look at this. At this week's meeting, we have another new member. I mean, at least he sounds dangerous. So, can you tell me what does this critical race theory guy do, anyways? Yeah, he um he thinks we might want to think about history, but you know, through the lens of race. I fucking hate you guys. Okay, dude, the milk thing was weird. I just, You're I weird. Really, it was a good. Just gotta say that goof. it's a really it weird a thing. Strong goof. Boil in mother. Wow. I mean, it sounds delicious. Thank you. Fair enough. Marsh. Is that poached? <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And this is when the enemy, NME agent, who's apparently been just like hanging out in the hallway of this Super Kid Academy lair for the last <laughs> hour, just like sitting there. Where has he been? I don't know, playing on his phone. He runs in now, runs back into the show with a giant gun that... Correct me if I'm wrong, it involves telephone technology. Yeah. There is a spirally telephone cord connected to it somehow. <laughs> he has a pirate cannon. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what he has. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's very sort of uh, wily Coyote, the biggest gun you could possibly get. Bits come out of it. It's massive, massive, massive. And she is not bothered at all about being faced with this comically large gun. Okay. Be honest, how many of you guys thought that Kelly was going to die for Jesus in this children's show? <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> that would have been a much better thing. than It would have been way better than what actually happened. She oh. would have died for a lie. We would have had a really good argument. <laughs> yeah. There's a really fantastic moment here, though, where she's like, you always have a choice. You always have a choice. And he's like, I have a gun. I have a gun. You're supposed to do what I say because I have a gun. <laughs> yes. But no, she explains that she's protected by the word of the Lord and the shield of faith. And I wrote in my notes, oh my God, if she gives this speech and he just shoots her in the face, this is my favorite movie. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> but the thing is, he's using a fear gun. I'm not scared of your fear gun. And so when he shoots her with his fear gun, she gets laser powers to put up like a laser shield. Yeah. And apparently it's a shield of faith. And I thought, oh Christ, that's fucking weak. That is- <laughs> but... That shield of faith is presumably because he was shooting a fear gun. Like now, now try an actual gun and see how her shield of faith fares. Uh, that's what, that's the next thing I want him to do. Just Indiana Jones style, pull out another gun and see how her faith, uh, holds up to it. God is vibranium and you're glue and I win. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. 
<laughs> he just kills her with the Captain America shield. <laughs> <laughs> so he, the uh, the henchman guy, is like, "Fuck! I my boss is gonna kill me now. You gotta you gotta let me win this thing." <laughs> and he kind of has a little breakdown, and he actually says exact words. I was only following orders. Yes, yes, he does. He absolutely does. And the thing is, like, he says that, and he says about how my boss is going to kill me, and she says, I should have known the head of the NME was behind this. It's like, yeah, well, I mean, you should have known that once he said, I'm from the NME, and was wearing a uniform <laughs> saying NME. Those were those are the clues that mean that you should have definitely got that. Yes. Yeah. What did she think he was, an independent contractor for an NME? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> a rogue agent? Right, but her response is even crazier. She hears him say, I was only following orders. And she's like, yeah, that's a that's a Nazi thing. But uh, you know what? Actually, a great way to fix being a Nazi, say you're sorry to God right now and you're all set. Mm-hmm. It's so good. He goes, I surrender. And she goes, I can't accept your surrender. But you know who can? I really wanted like the UN and the Nuremberg to come through the door. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. But also he says, I accept God's terms of surrender. And that is a way more acute way of describing Christianity than I think this film intended. (laughs) Yeah, good religion. Yeah, She also gives him the Bible or the manual here. I wrote in my notes, here, have the Bible. It sucks ass. (laughs) Sure does. We hear about Peter 1-3 here, which as it applies to this moment is, yeah, you can totally be a Nazi and then you can go to heaven by apologizing at the last second. So you're good. Yeah, you're all all good. God actually murdered his... Jewish son to save eventual Nazis who feel bad later is the message here. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Just to be clear. Mysterious ways and all that. And now we cut back to Carmen. He's saying his goodbyes to the children. Yeah, he uh, he thanks them for all that they did. But all they did was sing near him for cumulatively around seven minutes. And all (laughs) I can think is that they reminded him that not everyone can sing as well as he can. So he should probably get back out on the road because there's, there's money to be made there. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, thank you for performing two musical numbers for me and then making me perform one for you, even though it may get me killed. (laughs) (laughs) And then he's going to leave. And I was like, "Okay, I really need Carmen to ask about the portal in his bedroom that kids went into. Mm. And apparently the movie heard me and he's like, quick thing. (laughs) Why the fuck did you guys have a portal in my bedroom? Makes me really look creepy, I got to say. And uh they don't have really an answer for that. They're just like, yeah, it went there. Well, no. Kelly explains that God's plan included burning down his old house and then <laughs> him, right. him moving to a new temporary place with, with very extensive lace curtaining, by the way, and then <laughs> having a series of interdimensional children break into that house, wake him when they accidentally drop their robot as they go through, and then for him to follow those children. That's God's yeah, plan. Fair. That is God's plan. <laughs> also, what Paul says is how they can't always know where the translator is going to be, and it happened to be in your closet. So what Paul is saying is that his involvement with the church meant he had no choice but to be in the closet, which is a <laughs> very, <laughs> very on-point thing for Paul to be saying. Yes, it's a teaser for future shows. <laughs> and then... Carmen looks around and he's like, where's Missy? Which, by the way, very worrying based on their interaction so he's far. He's known them 11 minutes. And he's, where is that flirty eight-year-old blonde girl that I... Okay, uh, yeah. They have an answer. She comes mm. back and she's like, I, boy, before you leave, please take my guitar, Carmen. I love your hair. Yeah. It's really creepy. It's so creepy. And he does. Look, yeah. this is one of the most common movie tropes in existence. Please, before you go, stranger take object that is very near and dear to me and then the hero is supposed to say no i couldn't do that <laughs> right. carmen's like nice free guitar <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> free they, guitar. they point out that missy like she wasn't there initially because oh good they say goodbyes are difficult for missy presumably even for men she's known for cumulatively 11 minutes and i just <laughs> wanted that to, first of all i want that to be a super dark backstory that we dig into you in future episodes i really want to revisit that but uh, do we in your extensive research? Do we get that backstory? <laughs> I, I don't. I've not seen the, the next episodes. I, I I look forward to having to have. To wow, a, a little preparation, Marsh. I'd love you wow. to. You know who to watch the other episodes? Kara, Kara puts in a lot Santa of effort. Maria. <laughs> I, I can only assume that goodbyes are really hard for her because every time she says goodbye to someone, they take a really precious item that belongs to her with her. Like, I can't. I'm like, I must be like an orphan or something. You don't know where my parents are. Like, you can't keep taking things off me. That's that's what I think is actually happening. She gives away so much of her stuff that way. 
so now we cut back to Major Dread. He's he's going to do his I'll get you next time gadget monologue. <laughs> <laughs> but he appears on their screen. Yeah. To say, oh, revenge will be mine, Super Kids. But like, can he just appear on their monitors any time? Because if so, one, he must know where they are. Or two, he is broadcasting that to literally everybody in the entire world on the off chance that they'll see it. Oh, sorry. We are, I, I'm mad at a group of 11 year olds. I'm going to interrupt our shooting in the neck child program so I can say drat you, Commander Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there was a conversation. You know, there was a conversation in that writer's room that was like, do we want to say drat guys? It's just, I don't think that's the vibe of our show. Drat, you know, the D. <laughs> The D word. The D word they should have referred to it as. <laughs> yep. And we close on one more Bible verse here. We get Romans 8, 37 to 38, which says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay, fine. Like so I get what many the, questions. I, I, yeah, I get what they're trying to say, but I do have, I have at least one question. What was with the height or depth? Yep. How thing? did height and depth get on <laughs> that Apparently list? Apparently width can separate people from God's love, but <laughs> height and depth, no? It's the kind of Tina Turner, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no river low Ooh, enough kind of thing. Yeah. But there is a river wide enough. There is room wide enough, that's true. Which is even, Tina Turner goes one further than God in that respect. She's like, fuck, I'm across the river from God and there's like a sack of grain and then a fox. I don't know what to do here. I'm going to stay atheist because of this riddle. Yeah, there's, there's grain, there's fox, there's Tina Turner. You can only take one of them across it. Because yeah. Tina Turner is going to eat that fox. You can't well, leave it with a fox. You got Ike Turner and Tina Turner. Okay, no, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. <laughs> and a bag of cocaine. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then the the alarm goes off, which means it's time for their next mission. Again, they say there is more gang activity. Why do they keep talking about gang activity in their children's show? (sighs) Really wanted them to be like, there's child trafficking. We have to go stop (laughs) using the power of our two musical numbers. (laughs) They also say to stay tuned to the word of God. Yeah, Bible, 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 Bible. I I, I zoned out as the more they talk Bible, the more I just it was just gray noise to me. (laughs) and that'll do it yeah apparently that's the end of it except for everything that marsh has extensively researched which we will be doing (laughs) except for the terrifying post-credit stories that only marsh can provide i cannot believe you guys did not go straight to imdb when you see a gem like this this is (laughs) i'm I'm disappointed in you you've learned nothing from how from like 300 episodes of this show okay well based on all that information that only you know and eli do your best with this question too. What was the moral of the story? Kids, if a rich stranger invites you to his bedroom, God wants you to go with him. Oh, Ooh, yeah, that was a good one. Part of the story. Uh, just because your parents named you rapper doesn't mean you can. Or have to, I think. You just don't, you don't, don't do that. Mm, you have options. Rapper actually did a, another rappy gesture at the end, and I was furious. It's, as the mm. camera was panning away, literally, he was like, and us. hate crime one more time, and cut. <laughs> so bad. All right, well, that's going to do it for Super Kid Academy, The Intruder. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet, because we found another terrible movie. So, Eli, what's on deck? We'll be watching Courageous. When a tragedy strikes close at home, four police officers struggle with their faith and their roles as husbands and fathers. Okay. Together, they make a decision that will change all of their lives. Are you reading from like IMDb or are you actually yeah, that's just the deciding IMDb what you know to be the plot? <laughs> or is okay. just speaking from my heart? <laughs> <laughs> He's just doing a little slam poetry of his own that he wrote. <laughs> all right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 306 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Marsh for joining us. Marsh, anything to announce? No, you can just, uh, you know, look in the normal places where you'd find me, Skeptic Mag, skeptic.org.uk. A lot of interesting stuff there. We'll see you all at QED in February and uh, just generally look for me around, basically. QED, February. <laughs> for song. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, a big thanks to all the Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. 
and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. From Michael Marshall and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House close. NME was bought out by Fox Corporation, and the super kids weirdly <laughs> got a lot less worried about the influence of monopolistic media. <laughs> Atheist Antifa shoots a baby in the neck, went on to win a daytime NME. <laughs> <laughs> Commander Kelly needed her own private spaceship because public spaceships are tubes full of demons. (laughs) (laughs) Kenneth Copeland said that. (laughs) Like, really? I don't know if you guys checked out the the, the follow the 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 follow up uh, films and things. Um, but Alex is one of the only two cast members to return. I think. So really? Like, they got Alex yeah, back for more? Well, it's Alex and it's Valerie and it's Kelly and that's it. But of the two kids, Alex and Valerie return like 21 years later. They've done all of them. They didn't get back Rapper? No, Rapper didn't come back. He, no. he did the first three and so did Paul before he went on to uh, come out of the closet. Marsh, can <laughs> I give you a like, note? You know way too much about this. It's uh, <laughs> I, It was 25 unsettling. minutes long. I had to do some Googling to, to pad. <laughs> I was interested in what happened to these kids afterwards. Cool. Oh, I know what happened to these. I know what happened to that one girl for sure. We're going well, to have Missy. an interstitial Missy. with Marsh mm-hmm. in real life. <laughs> you guys were like right on together. That's right. Plugged in internet. All Morgan, right. I'm going to do my best to do this episode without the fan on, but I might need to turn the fan on. It's way louder than the one I have at home. So that's Just what I'm trying to do. be hot with. for a little while. It's like a half hour show. No, I don't want to do Noah. This is a Noah thing. Then you're Noah. Have you, have you thought about drinking a hot drink? <laughs> cool you down? What about some butt sex? I tried having some butt Oh, you beat me to it. How dare you? <laughs> that cools you down. All right. Great thing is we had the conversation before we start recording, so Morgan has no idea of the context. <laughs> I'm always podcast. You don't need context to that. That's just <laughs> a priori knowledge, everybody. Exactly. All right. And we're all going. All right, here we go. What are we going to be that breaking thing down you said today? Before I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm spoiled by the fact that I'm no longer on an 18 second delay. <laughs> Very exciting. A lot Marsh. of interruption based jokes today. <laughs> Not on, on, on the heck, subject, you're right. I will say I was listening to. I think it was either uh, the latest scathing or maybe the last got off movies. The pre-roll ad that came on was for CBD. So, Eli, you finally got your CBD. <laughs> ah, damn it. <laughs> we got like oh. 32 cents from that. <laughs> in their <laughs> faces. Call them. <laughs> so what happens is the bullshitters, they put their stuff in weird categories. Like the, po- the, the shitty political ads, they'll often put themselves in education. Right. So that because we have a ban on all the political ads except for like Joe Biden and vaccines and shit. Yeah. And obviously you keep in the ones for Brexit just to piss me off when it's like, <laughs> get ready for Brexit. Says oh, we, we request like, those, yeah. <laughs> way, yeah. way, way later. <laughs> <laughs> Want that CBD money, Mark. <clears throat> <laughs> so much money. <laughs> so much CBD. Maybe we pivot the company. Yeah. Marsh, you want to pivot with us? Drugs. I hear I hear we're merging with the alt right anyways. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, your your diatribe on that was amazing, man. It was exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. It's it was you you perfectly summed up. Good lord. Did people yell about it yet? Oh no. I, one guy wrote a really shitty message on Patreon and then was like, now that I think about it, you didn't mention the thing that I was mad about, so sorry. <laughs> I saw people saying, look. Maybe it didn't merge with the alt uh, with the alt right and with the the far right, but I'm not so invested in the new atheist as a movement that I'm willing to defend them. Is that right? But that means you're just willing to lie about them, then, yeah, right. which isn't doesn't make you the good guy. Yeah, you, you could say I'm just not going to engage with this at all, or that's a bad take. But to say, well, it's wrong, but I'm not willing to defend them. No, 
if you're not willing to, you know, argue against false statements, you're an asshole. You're not a skeptic. Yeah. That's the whole right. thing. Do you understand me when I do that? <laughs> no. <Nerf. She's- laughs> Cut your preparation. She's sort of merging with your Dolly Parton from Christmas on the Square. Yep. <laughs> All right. I didn't hear Marshawn Four. Uh, um, no, I was I was distracted and I didn't say a four there because you shot Heath down so hard. You were feeling guilty about it. Is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> I've had women not have sex with me more kindly. <laughs> okay. You can keep picking at that thread, Eli. I was going to offer. You, I was going to. I was going to tell you that when you come to QED, we would happily give you free childcare for for the bed within our in our child. But I mean, if you're going to carry on like that, I'll I'll, I'll pull that thread back. <laughs> it's right. free childcare for everyone except my child. <laughs> it's a hundred quid an hour. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.